Okay, um, on this one, this is actually the last example uh, in 4.6, and this is a pretty easy example, so I'm going to do a little bit more uh, in this video than what I have on the notes. Uh, so I want to find a transition matrix from uh, this basis into that basis. Um, so we've already remarked, uh, since we're changing this into the standard basis, uh, E1, E2, E3, then the transition matrix should just have as its columns these uh, these vectors, these basis vectors. So I ought to have 1, 2, 1 here. I ought to have 2, 5, 0 here. And I ought to have 3, 3, 8 there. Um, and really, that's the end of that problem. So let's talk a little bit more um, about this. So first off, how do I know that this is a basis? This is a lot harder um, to do than um, the example that we'd used in the other videos because it was just two vectors. Uh, the only way to have those two vectors be linearly dependent is to have them be um, um, constant multiples of each other. And so uh, it's a little bit more work to verify that this is a basis. So I'll, I'll show you the easy way to do this. First off, this has the right number of vectors, right? For R3, and I didn't write that here, but this is for R3. Hopefully you figured that out based on context. Um, but for R3, three vectors is how many should be in the basis. In fact, for Rn, there should be n vectors um, in the basis. And so this... Uh, set right here does have the right number. So the only thing we need to show is that these three vectors span all of R3 or are linearly independent. You don't have to show both. Um, if it has the right number, uh, then you only have to show one of those things. And so again, the um, the uh, linear independence is actually the easier thing to show. Um, so let's kind of off to the side, let's take a look at how we might work through that. So remember, I might have C1, U1, plus C2, U2, plus C3, U3 equals zero, where the C's are the coefficients. Um, the zero vector, that is. I should say zero, zero, zero. And so uh, what I want to show is if I have this, then C1, C2, and C3 need to be zero. So what I'm going to do, uh, because this is a three by three system, uh, it's three equations by three unknowns, um, I'm going to write this as a matrix equation. And uh, it's going to be C1, C2, C3 is going to be the vector we multiply by. And of course, the zero vector is just going to have zeros as every entry. Uh, but you can see that the top row here should be the first component um, of U1, the first component of U2, the first component of U3. So in other words, 1, 2, 3, like that. Uh, and similarly, it should be 2, 5, 3 for the second row, and 1, 0, 8 for the third. Now notice that ends up being this. Um, that ends up being the answer. So how can I show that the C's um, all need to be zeros? Well, notice if this is invertible, then we can multiply by that on the left. Those will basically cancel and you'll just have the C's. And then notice when I multiply on the left by that inverse here, because this is the zero vector, I'm just going to get zeros. So really to check and see if this is a basis, we form the matrix um, where uh, the columns are the basis vectors. And so then we just need to see, is this invertible? So what is the determinant of that matrix? Well, I'm just going to use the diagonal rule here. So 1 times 5 times 8 is 40. 2 times 3 times 1 is 6. And 3 times 2 times 0 is 0. Those all get added. And then the diagonal is going back. 1 times 5 times 3 is 15. So I'm going to subtract that. 0 times 3 times 1 is 0. Again, I'm going to subtract that. And 8 times 2 times 2 is 30. 
2, I'm going to subtract that. Notice you get 46 minus 47, that's negative 1, which is not 0. Um, and so therefore, this is invertible, that means the C's um, have to be 0 in this equation, and therefore, because this has the right number, and um, is linearly independent, that can be a basis. So again, that just kind of brings you back to some of the stuff we talked about earlier on in this chapter. Um, but also kind of tying in, remember, if you're changing into the standard basis in Rn, uh, for whatever n value, uh, you're just going to put the, uh, vectors in the other basis as the columns. Uh, and of course, I didn't ask you to find the transition matrix from B to B prime, uh, but we do know, based on what we've said um, in the last few videos, that it should just be the inverse of this. So uh, hopefully that makes sense, and if you have any questions, please let me know.